Number 14. Boxing gloves are padded to lessen the force of a blow. Letter A. Calculate the force exerted by a boxing glove on an opponent's face. If the glove and face compress 7.5 centimeters during a blow in which the 7 kilogram arm and glove are brought to rest from an initial speed of 10 meters per second. Let it be. Well, actually, let's do A first, all right? So uh, let's list what we know. So we know that the glove and the face compress by a value of 7.5 centimeters, all right? So that sounds like a distance, right, or a displacement. Um, so let's, t let's write down 7.50 centimeters. Converting that to meters, just move the decimal place two places to the left. You can also just simply divide by uh, 100. So this would be 0 0.0750, all right, uh, meters. So we just did that conversion right off the bat. Uh, then it also tells us now the mass, right, of the arm and glove was 7.00 kilograms. Okay, great. Um, and now, uh, brought to rest, okay, great. So the initial velocity, right, was 10 meters per second because it told us initially it was 10 meters per second. And then it came to rest, so its final value is zero. All right, so now I need to find the force Right, so I'm thinking from an energy perspective. I'll use this formula. So the work, right, is equal to the force times the distance multiplied by the cosine of theta. Okay, and now I realize in order to calculate the force, I need to know a couple of things, right? I need to know the work done on the object, the distance that it moved or compressed by, and the angle between the force and the distance. So uh, here, let's calculate, how do we find the work? Well, we have to remember this formula right, that the change in kinetic energy is basically equal to the work, all right? So a shorthand version of that formula would be something like this. The change in kinetic energy right, would be equal to one half m times the final velocity squared minus the initial velocity squared, okay? So let's find the, and then remember the change in kinetic energy, this is all equal to the work, all right? So the change in kinetic energy, okay? will be equal to then, and remember, we're finding the change in kinetic energy of the arm and glove, right? Because that is what is moving in the problem, right? The arm and glove are moving initially at 10, and then they come to rest, All right? So this is the kinetic energy of the arm and glove. I'll just write a little a there. So it's one half times the mass of that system, which they told us was seven kilograms, multiplied then by the right change in the velocity, so the final was zero, squared minus then 10 squared. Please remember, do not include the parent, do not include the negative sign with the 10 when you square it, all right? Otherwise it will be wrong in terms of the sign. So it should be 0.5 times seven, all right? Times then negative 10 squared. All right, so negative 350. So this should make sense, negative 350 joules, right? Remember this is the energy of the arm and glove. So that energy that the arm and glove is losing is gained by what? Is gained by the opponent's face. Lovely. So this value then in my formula, because I'm trying to find the force, where, where does it say? Let me just look back in the problem. Uh, right, calculate the force exerted by a boxing glove on an opponent's face, all right? So then I need to know the work done on the opponent's face. And the work done on the opponent's face is equal to in magnitude, but opposite in sign of the kinetic energy lost by the glove and arm. So this value is a positive 350, all right? And that should equal then the force, right? On the opponent's face by the glove, right? Then equal to the compression, uh, which was what here? Ch -ch -ch -ch. We calculate it up here, right? Remember, we need to put it in terms of meters. So we got uh, 0, 0, 0.0750. And then the angle between them, they are pointing in the same direction. So just oop, don't plug in zero. It's cosine of zero. All right. So when we do the math here, right, this will just be divide the side by 0 0.0750, divide this side by 0 0.0750. And then we find that the force done. Uh, by the boxing glove on the opponent's face, right, is going to be 350 divided by 0 0.075. So it comes out to 4.67, all right, four times 10 to the third. So we got 4.67 times 10 to the third, and that's in terms of Newtons.
All right. So that takes care of letter A. Right. So actually, let me put letter A down here because I think the givens might be similar for letter B. They might change slightly, though. We'll see. So letter B. Calculate the force exerted by an identical blow in the days when no gloves were used and the knuckles and face would compress only two centimeters now. All right. So the only thing that's going to change here is the right distance of compression. So instead of it being 0 0.075, it's now going to be 0 0.02 meters. All right. I just did the conversion right away to meters. So this is for part B. All right. So it's essentially the same problem, right? Uh, still the same, right? Uh, energy being lost by the arm and that energy is translated to the face. So this sounds like a brutal question, doesn't it? Um, so calculate the work. Uh, so not calculate the work. To calculate the force, we need to know the work done on the face by the glove is equal to the force on the face by the glove, the distance of compression, and the cosine of the angle right between those two. So again, it's going to be three, positive 350 is equal to F times then 0 0.2. Oops, sorry, 0 0.02 multiplied uh, then by the cosine of 0 which is just 1. So just divide out this side by 0 0.02, 0 0.02, cancels. So now the force in this case will be 350 divided by 0 0.02. So 1.75, 1.75 times 10 to the fourth it looks like, right? Yes, times 10 to the fourth newtons. All right, so a lot more force. Why? Because it's the same work done just over a shorter distance. Letter C, discuss the magnitude of the force with the glove on. Does it seem high enough to cause damage even though it's lower than the force with no glove? Well, I mean, I don't even think I have to calculate that, right? I mean, if you look at some of the boxing stars, it's terrible and all the, all the head injuries. But in any case, let's just see if we can, you know, take this force value and translate it into something, you know, uh, that might that might be more meaningful. You might look at it and say 4.67 times 10 to the third newtons. Okay, uh, what, what is that? How can I wrap my head around what that might uh, be like? You know, what, 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 what is that similar to? Well, why don't we calculate the weight of an object? Okay, um, not calculate the weight of the object. Why don't we calculate the mass of the object knowing the weight? All right, meaning this amount of force would translate to what mass? So we can easily calculate that, right? This would be just divide out both sides by g. So the mass of the object is equal to obviously the weight over gravity. Right? So the mass here, so this this force 4.67 times 10 to the 3rd over 9.8, right? Would be similar to a mass of 4.67 times 10 to the 3rd divided by 9.8. Oh. Only about 477 kilograms. 477 kilograms. Multiply that by 2.2, if you're not too familiar with kilograms. So that's a little over a thousand pounds, all right? Yeah, I think that's probably enough to cause some, some damage. What, what do you guys think? Leave a comment below if you think it's gonna cause some damage. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. I look forward to helping you out with the next question. Take care.